Good morning. It's the 14th of January 2014 and I'm finally getting some laundry done. I didn't get any done in Chicago because the price was too dear. The hotel had a laundry service but they wanted to charge you like between three and seven dollars per item. So I decided to wait and this load's only cost me $1.50 to wash so I saved myself a lot of money waiting. Okay. Check out what I'm having for breakfast. Yeah, I've got little baby hash brown scrambled egg, sausage, a pancake, toast, and Jonathan's got he's got some jalapenos and sour cream as well. So yeah, it's going to be really good brekkie. Where are we going today? We are going to Casa Loma, which is a um, castle, like an actual castle that was built in the early days of Toronto. So right now it's kind of downtown Toronto, but at the time it was built, it was built on a hill overlooking what was Toronto then. And it was built by a guy who was rich, he made his money, I think, in hydropower. And um, he, uh, he uh, <coughs> built it. But eventually he had to move out, he, he wasn't able to maintain it. Um, so it's a big landmark and a cool place to go and, and look around and, and see. Alright. Oh, uh, this is called Trafalgar Castle. And I forget his history, although I learned it when I was young. Um, they had a day camp in there. Now it's a girls' school. It's a private girls' school. But um, but it, it is a, another real castle. This one's in Whitby. It's in, now, Whitby is also a town. It has a sister town of the same name in England. I don't know if they're, they're designed the same way, the two cities. But this is Trafalgar Castle. And it's like, you can see, it's like a legit castle. <laughs> All these things are made in imitation, of course, of the original castles in Britain and yeah. Europe because we never had, like, knights and people trying to invade and things like that, so they're just imitations, but, but uh, yeah, I don't know why Canadians felt a need to build castles when they came to Canada, maybe because of our British heritage or something. Take a look at this, people. you got a Tim Hortons over here, and over here you got a Tim Hortons as well. <laughs> There's like one on every corner, almost literally. <laughs> that is a lot. This is unusual. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. It's nearly 11.30 and we've got a traffic jam in the middle of the day. Maybe somebody broke down. Could be, yeah. Yeah, make your audience suffer with us. <laughs> His name, but you have to wonder did the name change lead to all the other changes that went on in his career? Find out who that is. Prince. Stop at the Burger King for their dollar fifty nine Whopper Jr. It's the same burger you know and love with a 100% flame grilled beef nice patty. Here, eh? Enjoy ripe red tomatoes, like lettuce, right creamy right mayonnaise, and tomatoes, ketchup, yeah. pickles, and onions. Yeah. All on a toasted sesame seed bun. Here we are. Uh, we're about to head in. No, guys, you can go. Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. All right, we're about to start our tour of Casa Loma. 
I've got this little device I picked up from the gift shop. It basically gives you an audio um, for each room that you're in. So you just put it against your ear and it tells you everything you need to know about each particular room. This is the Oak Room where they used to entertain special guests. Just over here, that candlestick, that big one you see there, that's actually, that was taken from a church and you wouldn't normally find them in a residential dwelling. Anyway, we're going on to the next room. We're here in the billiard room where they used to play billiards, obviously, and also used to smoke a lot of cigars. Apparently the billiard table and all the equipment was sold off for about a quarter of its value. I don't know what this chair is all about. So. Okay, he started building this place um, in 1910. This is a portrait of him when he was at the height of his career, like before he lost all of his money and went broke. As you walk around the building, you see quite a few portraits of Henry Pellet. Obviously, because he, he's the guy responsible for this place. Um, not sure if that's an older one of him or not. Let's have a look what it say. Okay, that's a relative of his or something. We are now in the library. And he had quite a few books, as you can see. Another little tidbit I just found out. Beneath these floorboards, uh, there's a concrete 18 inches thick, which is strong enough to be able to support the weight of military equipment. Very interesting. Where shall we go next? Just looking up here on the ceiling, you can see that they had the family coat of arms put into the plaza, as well as some portraits, like that one, and that one. A lot of work must have gone into that. Hey, I'm standing in the conservatory. There's a lot of plants around. You've got a little fountain behind me there, see? And I want to show you these bronze doors behind me. Apparently they're really expensive. They cost like $10,000 or something back a long time ago when the place was first built. They do need some kind of renovation, but each door will cost about $130,000. So I think they're just going to leave them as they are. If you remember a few days ago, I went to a stained glass museum at Navy Pier. Well, take a look at this bit of work. It's uh, mm. it's great. We're looking at the serving room right now. I assume that's China. The guy liked to live a pretty opulent life, so. <sighs> Let's have a look at that up there. This was Henry Pallet's study. The writing desk is an exact copy of Napoleon's. So, and so you got a pretty old typewriter there. And we're going to be going upstairs. Uh, boots are the best thing to be walking upstairs. This is a guest suite where they had people stay for the night. There's about five of them. Um, and they're checked out in something called Shawazawi style. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I have no idea how to spell it. But maybe if you Google it, you can find out what it means. We're looking at the guest's bathroom right now. So you've got this old bath, this old style basin. 
but the taller looks a little bit too modern, it looks anachronistic. And other people want to come in, so there you go. Okay, Mary Pellet was his wife, and here are some of her clothing and artifacts that she had. Over here, some oh, some of the crockery they owned, and your little tea set here. ballroom dress. <laughs> Top hat. Here we've got another bathroom. Here we have one of the lounge rooms. Nice little fireplace. Because it can get cold in Toronto, not that I've really noticed this winter. <laughs> ah. How'd you like to take a shower in one of these? Institution or something. I prefer the modern bathroom. Okay. Hmm. The old cabinet. Johnson and Johnson. They've been around a long time, then, haven't they? Yeah. This is Henry Pellet's suite. Um, his wife had a separate one. Apparently, in those days, it was common for a husband and a wife to have a, their own separate living area. And over here we have a balcony. We got another like um, sitting room or something where people could sit around and drink brandy or scotch or I don't know if they had tequila back then. But he seems to have a penchant for pianos and organ. Doesn't ask about the third one that I've seen. bird as well. And we're going upstairs again to the third floor. Got a few really cool weapons. Hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty long rifle. And another one. Henry was also the third commanding officer of the Queen's own rifles in Canada. Old Henry got a few medals in his time.
Well, he certainly had a good view. Look at that. Want to join the military? This thing, have a look at the date. It is a hundred years old. More sinners. And more stairs. We're going up to the highest point of the building. We're getting pretty high up now. More stairs. Okay, here we go again. We are on top of the castle now. I'll give you a view from another window. Oh. Now for the most exciting room of the whole house. Wow. Nothing. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this room. Oh, it's available for rental. Okay. It's a rented have church in here. That sounds yeah. like a good idea. <laughs> This room is also available for rent. Okay. Hmm. Those rental signs weren't up the last time I was here. I think we've come to the end. We're going to a cafe for a coffee. Yeah. Uh, post office. Oh, post office. Where's post office? Uh. I mean, we're downtown Oshawa, but where would the post office be? Uh, well, let's go in here. There's Service Canada, maybe they'll tell us. <laughs> okay. And if Jonathan could explain exactly what it's meant to be. Oh, uh, I don't know, um, but I think I see two things in it. I see one, it's like uh, the flood, it's like humanity drowning in the flood. The other thing is I see it as like, I think it's intended to be like um, uh, people reaching up to it, receive enlightenment from the water of life, you know, from some sun source. Yeah. But you know, Look at all those people there. It's like, are they all helping each other up to the top guy who's trying to reach it? Not bad, boy. Or are they all clawing, you know, over one another to try to survive the floodwaters, you know, <coughs> yes. or to get it or to get the, the prize? But either way, I see it kind of as Luciferian and yeah. this man trying to exalt himself and build a tower to heaven to try to, you know, attain um, to be like gods. Jonathan's getting a coffee. I've already got mine. I've got a latte and I've got a macadamia nut cookie. Oh, Jonathan's got his coffee now. 
and we're at a place called uh, the Coffee Culture Cafe. What is that? <laughs> What's the time? Uh, the time is... You don't have a watch. 5.16 p.m. Okay, 5.16. We're at Krabby Joe's tonight. I haven't had Krabby Joe's for a couple of years now, I think. I never have. you never had it before? Never been here, no. Oh, it's Jonathan's first time at Krabby Joe's. Yep. <laughs> Better stop smiling before I go in. Well, you got to look at the menu. Oh, okay. This looks really yummy, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, it does look good. It's wing night tonight, but I feel like um, a steak. Let's see, where are the steaks? Where are you? Oh, here's a beauty. Sorry about the light reflecting off that. Jonathan has his uh, T-bone with his loaded fries and shrimp. Yeah, garlic, garlic shrimp. And uh, my food is still coming. Yeah. Doesn't that look good? Looks very good. Jonathan gets us lost behind the building. I have no idea where we are or how to get out of here. Is there room to go around there? Make sure nothing's coming the other way. Yeah, okay. Here we go. That's okay. I think you just drive out there, Jonathan. Yes, yes, I think you're right. But you're still just in the car park, back. so you've got to slow down. Oh, you're not on the road okay. yet. Okay. Here we go, slowing down. Jonathan and I are heading back to the hotel now, so. Good night from Whitby, Canada. Jonathan, want to say good night? Good night. <laughs>